friends. I'm sorry. Got excited. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Jamish. Hey, how's it going? Very hey. well. How about yourself? Doing good. What are we talking? Well, I kind of spoiled it. We are talking about open <laughs> search and security analytics. But really, you know way more about this than I do and probably possibly ever will. So please enlighten me. But wait, maybe we should have them introduce themselves first, Kyle. We have that like two wonderful. new people, right? Yes, we do. Uh, my ma I mean, I left my abacus downstairs, but I think we do have two new people. Well, I have mine right here. So why don't we start with uh, Kevin? Let's go first with an intro. Excellent. Hey, my name's Kevin. Uh, I am a principal specialist solutions architect. I work with uh, Jamesh and his team and uh, help customers with multiple integrations when it comes to open search and search engines. So looking forward to uh, speaking with everybody today and uh, really excited to be on the show to talk about what we have for you today. And Kevin, where are you joining us from today, if you don't mind my asking? I'm uh, at a little small town outside of Boston, Massachusetts, uh, a little place called uh, Plimpton. You're going to um, give us some Boston accent during this? Uh, well, you got to park the car at the bar, okay? <laughs> Can we have some chowder? Can you have some chowder here? <laughs> All right. Hey, Jim, get us out. back on. I'm not a native Boston, Boston person. I, I, I married a, you know, a person from Boston and Italian. So they have the accent. I'm a foreigner. It's all right. It's all right. All right. Hey, Jim Ash, uh, maybe you introduce yourself next year. Sure. Thanks, Art. Um, hi, everybody. This is Jim Ash. I'm a senior technical product manager for Amazon Open Search Service. And I help customers protect their data and their infrastructure. All right. And where do you join us from this week? I'm in the office here in Palo Alto, California. All right. So we are close, close, close to each other here. So, oh, yeah. All right. So um, as we're about to get started here, we're excited to talk. I think we should probably get Kyle, get a little bit of an overview of uh, open search. And uh, those that were on here, you're not crazy, uh, who were here with me uh, last week. We we did a little open search as well, too. But uh, oh, I want people to believe that they're having a deja vu, really freak them out on a Friday. <laughs> I, you know, but you know, I do have a different, I purposely made sure I wore different clothes this week. I just want to be clear, you know, so it's something different. All right, let's get going. Um uh, Kevin, you want to get us started here with a little bit of an overview uh, into a quick overview into open search, and then we talk about the security analytics stuff. Definitely. So uh, I think last week you all covered a little bit about open search and search engines, and uh, you know just to give you a high level overview of what open search is, uh, you you will hear search engines such as Elasticsearch. You'll hear search engines like Solar. You'll hear other you know, providers such as Splunk. Um, now, when we look at search engines uh, and we look at what open search offers, it is a, what we call a lucene based engine. And it was initially built to search uh, documents to give you back uh, you know, things that are relevant to the search terms that you provide. Now, over time, what happened is they you know, capitalized on that engine, gave you the capability to have e-commerce website search. So normally when people think about search engines, they think about uh, you know, uh, going online and having an e-commerce website. You have a catalog of products. You type in some terms every once in a while. You accidentally mistype things. And so for that, we have fuzzy matching or you know, a, a similarity type of search mechanism. And that's normally what you think about a search engine. Well, given that Open Search is a distributed engine, it works very well for time series data. So today we are going to talk a bit about how time series data works very, very well with security events. As you all know, um, when an event happens, there is a certain time or a point in time where these things occur. And you want to be able to then understand the trail of events that follow from an initial, you know, uh, potentially security risk. And so when you look and you talk about open search or elastic search engines, 
the, the time series portion of that is very, very embedded in that technology. And so for open search, what we do is we build what we're going to talk about today, which is security analytics on top of time series information. So again, a distributed system, highly scalable, a, you know, ability to take in some cases, you know, hundreds of terabytes of data of ingest volume to then analyze the traffic that is coming in. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Jamis. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about, you know, what he has built from his team. And uh, that's pretty much it about open search. All right. <clears throat> Love it. Jamesh, you ready to go here? Yes. I'm just going to share some slides here. Oh, are so. you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, Kyle, I think, would be awesome in a karaoke bar. I don't know if, like, awesome <laughs> is the right word, though. I don't know about that. All right, all right. Let's get to uh, some of the benefits of open search. You know, we're here to talk a little bit about uh, security as well, today being security day. Last week, we talked about the ingestion side of it. So, uh, Jamesh, you wanna give us a quick run through of, you know, the security analytics portion of this and, you know, what makes this important to some of the customers, to all of the customers, I think, out there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you. So. OpenSearch uh, recently launched a security analytics capabilities uh, as part of uh, all the feature set that we have. And the goal really is to help our customers to you know, detect uh, potential threats in real time and give you the tools to investigate them, analyze them, and also when needed to go back in time and look at historical data, correlate across that data, giving you all of these capabilities um, so that you can narrow down on uh, when threats, uh, when there's a, a security threat in your organization and find what the attack surface is, you know, what assets may be impacted as well as, you know, um, any other information around the threat. Is it like an insider threat or, or a compromised password and things like that, right? And security threats have become so common these days that it's really important for us to have the tools at our disposal to look through, you know, terabytes and sometimes petabytes of logs to find that security threat that's important that you need to go focus and quickly remediate, right? So that's what Open Search Security Analytics was built for to help you do some of those things and give you all the tools that you need that you can fine tune for your environment. So we want to help you to decrease the time to response by giving you some of uh, some out of the box content for some common security log sources, right? We talked about like AWS CloudTrail or uh, you know Windows you know, security event logs, and there's you know hundreds of other out there. We we have coverage for a good set of logs, and we're um, we're going to keep adding more coverage for additional security logs. Uh, in addition to that, we are giving you out of the box uh, Sigma security rules, you know, open search uh, is an open source product and, you know, open search service is a managed service that runs open search. So we're using open source Sigma security rules um, to find these potential threats, not just for your AWS infrastructure, but for many different log sources, you know, I mentioned you know, Windows, uh, Office 365, Azure logs, and just uh, other security logs. And most importantly, once you have found this potential security threat, it's important to have automated workflows that can send notifications to different sets of users in your organization, depending on the severity of the threat and the type of the threat. You may want to send you know, your critical, most critical threats to a certain group of users versus your low severity threats to a different set of users. So we want to uh, give you all of those automated workflows that you can customize and fine tune to your business needs. So I think what I heard, Kyle, that I really like, uh, Jamesh, as well, is, is a couple of things. One was we covered last week that everybody was really thrilled that this is genuinely open source part of what we do here. So I think that that's key to the operations who are kind of advancing that as well. And the other portion here that I heard is, is, is that 
you know, we're, you react to, this isn't just we ingest and notify about a security problem. We actually help you take action, notifying people. And I think, you know, that's sometimes the problem with a security thing is like, you know, what happens? Anybody has ever been in a physical building that an alarm goes off and it goes off so frequently, people just are like, I don't know what that's for. It just happens all the time. I don't take action. Right here is, is in, in this, you know, in the software world, in the cloud world, we can identify you know what the problem is and contact someone specifically who had trained to deal with it right i think this exactly. is uh and by the way um kyle i just want to say uh i heard the word demo and i heard the word demo too uh, and you mentioned you know uh when there's an alarm i always feel that way about the fire alarm in my house it just always goes off and i'm just like eh, whatever um now when we were talking about guard duty findings you know in the news about the new functionality of guard duty and it generates a finding findings need to go somewhere and something like open search and security analytics is a place for you to want to send these types of things to. So this is how you're going to centralize these types of alerts for your security operations teams to be able to respond and then look at the different log sources to help contextualize a security event. And it looks like the fact that you start with 2200 open source Sigma security rules. Real quick, what is a Sigma security rule? Sure. Uh, Sigma is an open source project uh, where security analysts and security researchers are um, trying to find some of these uh, potential threats. And if there are other threats out there that are known, they're creating security rules for these threats. And these researchers then um, commit these security rules back into the Sigma repository. So you guys can go look it up on GitHub and we can put a link in the chat later. Um, and then that's how the Sigma has a thriving community of security analyst, analysts and researchers who are contributing and helping uh, us to stay on top of the game by making sure we have rules for even some of the latest threats. You know, and that's really cool that you're involved, like we're, we're leveraging ways that the communities can contribute. Um, and, you know, the security community, as cheesy as it may sound, I always say a rising tide floats all ships but on the other side i also say i light my path with the bridges i burn that's separate that's different right that's, but yeah, when, that's total, when hey. we have a security community being able to say hey um we're seeing this sort of uh funny business um happening within our environment here's a sigma rule we created to help you identify if said funny business is occurring in your environment here's that rule bring it into your platform and then you're able to look for said funny business um, so that's really cool, and um, I'm really, really liking how we're contributing um, to a lot of these different open source projects, too, when it comes to security. Art, is your hand up? <laughs> oh, I thought, you were, I thought you wanted to chime in there for a second. We do have a question from someone. Um, does open search cover live data, or does the data get downloaded and logged before it's processed? Is the data that gets covered configurable by network administration? I'll let you two open search wizards answer that question. Yeah, so it's detecting threats on, on live data, right? So as Kevin was mentioning earlier that, you know, you can stream uh, live time series data into open search. And we have a rules engine within security analytics that's constantly monitoring for the incoming data every minute. And as the data is coming in, it's doing its analysis and helping you find those potential threats, giving you additional information about you know why it is a threat and uh, what you can do about it. I just I will also say thank you for the question, Isk Cube. I don't know if that's not that's how you say the name. I'm bad with these names, Kyle, because I'm. Sure I've, I've mean... learned um, through other <laughs> way, reasons uh, that it's just easier to just bring up the question. Like, well, you know, I still try. I still try, uh, and and it gets me into trouble. But but um, I think that that uh, just as a note, it is a, a question that also we that came up last week too. So I think it's great that we bring it up again and we're able to cover it here because it's obviously quite a few people have a concern question about whether it ingests the live data. I think it's it's great. All nice. right. And you know, we mentioned the word demo earlier. We kind of left a breadcrumb. Now someone was like, We want a demo. I know. And I believe y'all have a demo. Yes, yes, we do. You give the people what they want, Kyle. We give the people what we want. Are we okay <laughs> to bring up the demo? May the may the demos be in your favor. Yeah, for sure. Excellent. Hopefully, All right, let's go. Uh, there you Use go. A All right. <laughs> 
So uh, what we have here is um, so just a couple things as far as background. Now, um, the Amazon Open Search Service, it does support Open Search Engine. And for those of you that are on AWS and are going to look at my demo today, keep in mind, I have the latest and the greatest leading, leading edge that is in, as part of the open source community. So the Open Search Service, or the Amazon Open Search Service, does provide this functionality for you right now in version 2.5. It won't necessarily be the same functionality you see on the screen. Um, Jamesh was uh, very kind to have his team spin me one of the latest builds. So we're going to get right into it. But realize that you can run this on your own, in your own managed environments, on any other providers, on-prem, whatever you have. And then you can also leverage this as a managed offering on AWS. But in the end, when you first log into what we call open search dashboards, some of you are familiar with Kibana, and so you're going to see a lot of similarities in here. Um, that was due to a while back, um, a fork was done for the, uh, the Elasticsearch project, and we generated open search as you know, part of requirements that our customers wanted us to do to help develop that open source Apache 2.0 license project. So what you're going to see here is part of that open source community you know, helping to build a better future for search. So when we look at open search dashboards, you're presented with a basically a menu on the left-hand side. And depending on your implementation, if you look at the Amazon Open Search Service, you're going to see a lot of plugins. If you look at your own self-managed, you can be very, very specific about the plugins you bring in. And our documentation does cover how to set up the integration for the security analytics plugin. What you'll find on the left-hand side is underneath the open search plugins, you will see a basically a breadcrumb or a link to go to security analytics. So when we come into security analytics, what you'll be presented with is an overview screen. Now the overview screen is gonna tell you what is going on with the uh, uh, activities that you have for your particular security findings as uh, you know the things that Kyle mentioned. Now uh, the data set that I have right now is uh, running over basically a 20 day window. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and provide some filters so I can narrow down on the specifics of some of the work that we've done. Now, the data has been cleansed. Unfortunately, I'm not going to run uh, you know, any uh, actual live data through my demo right now, um, just for the, you know, and I should say the last 20 days here. Uh, I, I need to make sure that we protect the innocent here and I don't reveal any confidential information. So there is you know, some generated data here. Um, it is being streamed in actively. But um, when I do take a look at some of the things that the Sigma rules help define, I will find in the summary page details around how many active alerts I have, how many total findings I have. And these are presented on a graph. Now, active alerts are things that are in progress. And when you take a look at the alerting section, I can see the alerts that are available. I can choose to acknowledge those alerts or leave those pending. So if I do have an operations team on the SOC side of the house, they can go ahead and use this as a prioritization system to ensure that you know, people have addressed specific things. I'll also find outside of the top level summary, um, I will find recent findings. And so when I look at recent findings, I'll have things like publicly accessible RDP service or Quark's password dump. You know, someone's going in on your Windows box and they're trying to go ahead and hack into the internal database to get your password so that they can then compromise your system. Hey, hey Kevin, I have a dumb question for you during okay. the demo here. Yeah. How do the rule names get named? Are these names that like the people here in the audience, they set up themselves or... These are some of these are kind of already uh, part of the system. Like, you know, what if I have my own unique rules? Can I add more? How does the, the rules work? Totally. So, you know, as as was mentioned earlier, um, there is this Sigma framework out here. And, and at the point or at the time of this offering, we do have 2200 plus rules that follow mm. the Sigma standard. If you want to go out to the GitHub, Sigma HQ slash Sigma, and you can understand what Sigma is, but basically, it is a language that was created very, very similar to YAML that allows you to identify certain fields inside of your data sources that you can then 
say, if I find, uh, you know, some sort of characteristic I've defined in my SIG rules in a specific field on my index, go ahead and let me know. So to your point is I can name these security rules pretty much anything that I want. So, for example, I can enter a rule name in here and, you know, um, Kyle's got this ongoing thing right now, somewhere around Star Wars, but I might have something like called the Darth Vader rule, right? And uh, what I can do effectively is I can create a rule. I can select the log type, whether it's going to be, you know, network, DNS, Apache access. And we'll talk a little bit more about what log types we currently support right now. And Jamish will give you an idea of what the future here is shortly. But I can go ahead and I define the information associated with a rule. Now, uh, for those of you that don't want to use a visual editor, we do have a YAML editor. And I can go ahead and I can basically take an existing rule that I might have. I can pull that in. And if we take a look at the, the screen here, I might have a run DLL32 execution now. For those of you that are out there, um, you might know this as a typical launch point for malware, where what happens is that this is used to fire off an executable that will call some source code that potentially could you know, compromise your system. So you can go ahead and define this particular rule yourself if you want to, and you can paste it into um, the uh, YAML editor that we provide for you out of the box, and then you can go ahead and mint this. Now, you, know, you have a, a bunch of different fields and capabilities that you have with inside the Sigma rules, but it's totally uh, up to the person to give the rule the name that you want it to have. So I can have a title, which is a run DLL32 execution. I can call it anything I want. I can call it, you know, the Darth Vader rule, for example, right? And, and so in the end, you have full flexibility to take the out-of-the-box stuff that is coming from the open source community, and you can augment it with your own rules in this feature. Hopefully that answers the question. It, it answered my question, by the way, I think you like Darth Vader too much. Uh, and wow. I, th I think the example is super cool. Kevin right? knows I'm very easily pleased. So thank you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> I am pleased as well, I admit. But I, I, I'm also incredibly pleased by the, the fact that you also offer a YAML editor um, here. And maybe I should have known that already before today, Jamesh and Kevin, but apologize. This is this is you know uh, effectively a, a new feature set that we are providing with uh, with Open Search. Um, I don't expect you to know all of the stuff that's uh, associated with it. There is a lot there, and um, what we're trying to do is make this simple. You know, just just to be clear here, the open source community defines these rules. You bring those in the twenty two hundred plus that we have. You don't necessarily have to do any work. You just leverage the rules, you pick your log source type, and we'll run through how this all looks, and then you use what's out of the box. And so it's very easy to get started using this feature with Open Search. Um, maybe we just jump into how I create a detector, and then we'll talk through the other things that come out of what happens when you create that detector. Let's do it. Let's Excellent. Go. All right. So, you know, I did, did show you the summary page, and I'll go ahead and wrap up there. Uh, you do have a one-stop shop for all of the details, you know, the most frequent detection rules, and this could give you an idea, you know, maybe I should focus some of my security experts on more of this area and less of another area, not to say that it isn't all important. And also, you know, we do have a high-level summary of the detectors. Now, in this particular demo environment, there is a lot here, and realize that our open source engineers not only you know, well, on the AWS side, but other people that contribute to this open source community um, are, are playing around on this system. So uh, what you're going to do is after you've got the high level summary page, the typical thing is that you're going to go ahead and create a detector. Now, a detector out of the box, you'll see all the detectors that your teams have created. And again, you can name them whatever. You have full flexibility. There's no hard and fast rule as to what it is going to be called. It really depends on your naming standards, and we hopefully have enough flexibility for your naming standards. Go, go ahead. I was just going to say there's some creative names here, Kyle. Test, quadruple one, test one, yeah. two, three, three. It's like, why did someone do test one, two, one, two? 
you know, uh, just, it, it could well, or they could then test two one one two, but you know, then we're going into a rush reference, and we're supposed Anyhow. to. <laughs> but, All righty, um, sixty six. Yeah, exactly. I could call one C three PO. Oh, that's an excellent name for a detector. So let's go ahead and get into that, right? So let's create a detector, and um, you know, hopefully, I'm getting the name right here. I got to uppercase this, and. Um, you know, effectively, uh, this rule, uh, I'll just give it a name. And in this case, it is going to be a, um, you know, humanoid uh, robot superimposed as a security analytics detector. And as I'm rolling through this, I do have to uh, identify a data source. So um, if we take a look at the data sources down here, we have network events, DNS logs, Apache access logs. You can read, I don't need to, to name these off. But out of the box, we do give some formats that we already understand. And Jamesh will talk about the future state of where we're taking this product. You know, you can see our roadmap um, or the community roadmap uh, on the open uh, search side of the house so you can understand exactly where this project is, ten is trending to. But in the end, you have the ability to select, you know, certain logs. So in this case, I'm gonna grab some Windows logs. Um, and in here, I'm going to correct, uh, collect or uh, you know identify one of the indexes that's created. So you have the ability to do either a wired wildcard or select specific indexes as they apply to the type of log that you want to apply the out of the box sigma rules. As we see, as I select the uh, different log types, they're going to give me the type of rules that are associated with it. Now, keep in mind. Again, we're using the open source community. We're trying to backfill all this information. So it's not going to be entirely populated. And for that, you do have the ability to import your own. But in the end, what we have right now are the things that we've tested with. And so for Windows logs, more specifically, there are about 1580 uh, selected rules. Now, most customers, when we did our interviews to understand exactly how this product should work, is that people didn't want to go in and cherry pick these you know, uh, Sigma rules and add them. Now, some administrators may want to do that. There may be certain rules that don't apply for your workload and you have full ability to select or deselect the individual rules as needed. In the end though, most customers said, you know what? Please just find anything that is going to be a potential risk to my systems. And so we select all the rules out of the box. Once you've selected the rules, there is a mechanism to configure field mappings. Now, we take care of the field mappings for you, but you do have flexibility, especially if you bring your own rules in, right? But in the end, um, I can uh, you know, take a look at the automatically mapped fields, and these are the specific ones that are associated with the Sigma rules that have identified the sources or the, uh, the fields that are on your index, so it does the auto mapping. Now, you do have also another screen that says, well, there might be other 40 pending fields, in this case for the logs that I have, that you can add. And if the, uh, the, the, the um, Sigma rules that you have happen to reference that name, you can go ahead and map them in this section. Right now, we just go ahead and identify that, hey, there's 40 other fields here on your logs. Do you want to use those as part of your rules? Um, this, we normally just go ahead and skip over for the time being, and then we go ahead and we give a detector schedule. Now, keep in mind, if we're frequently querying the data, we're basically going to, you know, find events within a certain window time. So you have the flexibility to run the detectors as frequent as you want, or maybe less frequently. Let's say, for example, you're an administrator, you don't have a very, very large budget. You don't want to eat up all your CPU resources by running these rules frequently. You can change the span of the window so that you have minimal impact on your deployment for open search, yet you still are able to maintain some level of awareness as what's happening in your systems. So, so you once do it at a frequency that is comfortable for you, Kevin, or let's say a frequency that makes sense for the operation that you're doing, right? I mean, there may be some people that need to do something highly, very frequently, depending upon the operation that you're running. And there may be other things that the threat detection, you determine the risk is lower and the frequency of something is, you know, whatever it is, your example here is 10 minutes. Someone else's yeah. could be one minute type thing. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Threat modeling and, uh, will help determine that. Yes. Yeah. There you go, and, Kyle. 
there, there's multiple reasons as to why you may select a, a interval schedule, but that flexibility was asked for by, you know, the people that we interacted with when we were working on, you know, identifying, is this product something we should work on? And so this was one of the things that was identified. And one of the things that we do offer as far as a configuration uh, mechanism. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to use the open search dashboards. Everything that is associated with open source, uh, open search, as far as a plugin, does have an API. So if you look at our documentation, there's an API. Most of you are going to be a Terraform shop or some other sort of automation. You're going to have you know, some CI CD pipeline. You're going to do all this work and you're going to push it out to your cluster. So that capability is there. And we really have this for the sake of the demo, just to show you the capabilities in a more visual format for those that are trying to understand this feature set. So um, in here, once you've defined a detector and you've set up uh, you know, the information that you want, you can have an alert trigger. Now, what an alert trigger is, is when I, def when, when I detect something's happening, behind the scenes, we're gonna show in that overview summary page, hey, something happened. And most of us don't want to camp on an open search dashboard. We do have a day job. And you know, for those of you in the security space, your day job involves a lot of heavy duty work. So you can set up an alert trigger. Now the alert trigger is basically gonna be you know, behind the scenes a query. I can set up a, uh, a condition that you know, if I have 1580 rules defined, I might want to say, you know, and let's keep this to something maybe a little bit more, um, you know, uh, happy instead of using the Darth Vader thing. I'll go with the Luke Skywalker type, type of trigger here, right? Uh, so um, I just want to say I like uh, CPO better. Three like CPO better? Okay. Do you want the internal temperature of a tauntaun? <laughs> oh my gosh. Luke, lukewarm. <laughs> so. Well, we'll go ahead and use C3PO, uh, uh, you know, based on the, um, and I can not even learn how to type on this brand new laptop. Apologies. I'm trying hey, to and, uh, Kevin and Jamish, I'm going to really test your multitasking capabilities here because we're going to be wrapping up soon, but I want to get these questions yeah. out here. So after a rule detection hits, is there a way to implement post alert um, to like a, a source system or move those alerts um, to, a, a, you know, a security partner to do automation things and stuff? Yeah. yeah, let me take that oh, one. Go ahead, I'll let you take that one. Sure. Yeah, while well, you fill some info there. Um, so yes, you can. So when the detection rule hits, uh, you know, we create something called a finding. It's a security finding that gives you all the information about, you know, why what's happening, why we think it's a potential threat. And then it's really up to you to decide, do you want to be alerted if something like this happens again, right? And that alert can go to an email or a chime. Uh, you know, your pager duty service now, any other system that you're using to manage, you know, for your incident response, you can forward those alerts there and then, uh, you know, manage them there. But we have, you have the full control on when to forward the alerts and select which destinations based on severity. So I think Kevin's actually on that page. So I'll, I'll pause there. Yep. So uh, uh, just as, uh, you know, um, Jamish mentioned, you have full capability to modify the message how you want. And normally what is going to happen, you know, if you're using the Amazon Open Search, SNS is a, um, uh, a topic that you can send your stuff to and you have full capability to build on top of that. But if you use the, uh, you know, the open source side of the house, usually you're going to go ahead and camp on top of, uh, you know, things like custom web hooks. But in the end, you can customize this message and you can put information in there. And then once you have it configured, you can go ahead and test it, but we have uh, you know the configuration of the alert trigger for C3PO. We go ahead and create that detector. Now, in the end, you're gonna see it's attempting to create the detector behind the scenes, what it's doing right now. It's gonna take that log source and it's gonna identify things. And we're not gonna wait for that. In the end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run over to the findings. So right now um, it's refreshing the screen and we can see that for the data sources we provided for this demo, that we do have findings. We have Findings around Active Directory LDAP. We have CloudTrail findings, network, others, um, you know, from an application perspective. And these are just groups that are, you know, grouped by uh, activities in here. We have S3, Windows logs, and whatnot. In the end, though, um, you're going to get a finding, as Jamesh mentioned. And 
And in this case, um, there is something I should just note here before we uh, have to terminate uh, on this discussion. Uh, there is a new experimental cor correlations, and I do want to highlight that. That's going to be uh, in version 2.7, keep me honest, uh, Jamesh, which in the fullness of time we'll make into the open search uh, service. But what we do is we categorize these on the screen, and you're able to look at the individual findings, and you can jump in to see what was exactly found here. So on May the 4th, be with you, um, there was a, you know, someone trying to access, maybe do a, uh, you know, a Quark's password dump file. Uh, another one that we have in here is maybe there was a bad sign on that happened on the 5th. You can actually jump into that finding ID. This information also can be transmitted through one of those notifications through the alerts. And it gives you some details here. Now, the real cool thing is that we have this correlations mechanism. And you don't just have one log type here. We can actually look at other log types. So keep in mind that this one was a Windows log, but also in the network logs that we were scouring here as part of the uh, event rules in the other data sources, we did find some correlations. So the you can password actually finding was probably from Luke going, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're not my father. Uh, so in, in the end, you know, we do have this relationship diagram that shows you, you know, what uh, occurred. Was it critical, medium, high, and low? It is color coded, and I'm a colorblind person. So apologies if I say red instead of green uh, and vice versa. But you do have this capability now to understand the correlation. And it tells you kind of what was happening here. We had a publicly accessible RDP service, and someone was able to actually go ahead and hack in and get into this particular Windows instance, and they're trying to dump some password files. So um, this, if you put this in your automation system, you are then able to build your reactionary frameworks. So this kind of covers, you know, the uh, the detectors, the correlations. Um, we did cover a little bit about the detection rules and be able to define your own Sigma rules. The alerts, again, are those configuration mechanisms that we had when we defined the detector. And the findings, which are the most important things, um, are the, the things that across your entire system for all the rules that you have configured and deployed, you have a nice little summary page of this information. Again, API access, so you can interface your own systems if you need to in the future but then you can use your reactionary frameworks using the alerting mechanisms that provided out of the box with the open search offering. So I'm gonna pause. I know I've taken a little bit more time, but I wanna turn this back over to Kyle and team because uh, there are probably a few more questions that Jamish and I can answer for our audience today. Yeah, Why, so when did can... they become Art and team, Art and Kyle? Why Kyle first? Okay, well, so um, Just kidding. It, 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 it might be the fact that I'm getting confused because it normally should be Jeff, right? Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. Got him. I am <laughs> That's, there's, a lot of pain. That no. there's a lot of pain there. So um, say you were stuck in an elevator with us, and you're like, I really need to tell you about the future of open search security analytics. What would you say before the elevator went plummeting down? I don't know why I use that example. I don't want to yeah. be in an elevator like that, but I do still want to know what the future of open search is here. Can we cover that regardless? Jamal, yeah, yeah. you're up. Yeah, absolutely. So so uh, Kevin gave you a sneak peek at the correlations engine. So we're going to keep making that better. Um, but some of the big features that are coming uh, in, in the upcoming year with security analytics is you know the ability to bring in even more log sources there's like hundreds of thousands of log sources out there and it's very power it's a you know powerful capability to correlate across all of these log sources with just a few clicks right so we're looking to support many more log sources uh, we're also working on providing you with out of the box content uh, more rules dashboards that give you insights so you don't have to go and create some of these things we will create them for you as the data is coming in um, as well as one popular ask has been uh, from from many customers is like does this work with security lake uh, it does work today but you have to go through a, a few manual steps we'll be working on some automations and integrations there that you can bring your data from security lake and analyze all of the data in open surf in just a few clicks um, the last thing i'll say is one other big ask from customers is great i can run it for to detect real-time threats 
but you know some of these threads started six months ago can i go back and investigate can you run this on my historical data we'll be adding some capabilities to you know create some sort of a timeline where you can see when it all really started and how it's all connected up to your real time thread. So those are some- I think that that's a great feature, you know, right? Like being able to manage yeah. that back in time as well, super cool and and really important, right? I mean, I think that's one of the things as security folks that we that you need is, is, is not just knowing that there's a thread in there, what is the frequency with it? with which it happens, when ha when has a similar threat potentially happened before? So you can analyze it and then we can all take action as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, Jamish, Kevin, thank you so much for your time. And not, you know, when I'm learning a lot is when I'm not talking a lot. And uh -oh. I don't know if you noticed, I wasn't talking that much. I just, I caught myself, I'm just like learning so much about this and it's super exciting, uh, you know, because I, I work with customers every day uh, with security operations center teams, incident responders, threat hunters, pen testers, you know, I'm a pen tester myself, ha <laughs> ha, jokes. But really <laughs> the fact of the matter is this has been something that we get asked frequently, like does AWS offer anything that can do this? And now I can say, as a matter of fact, yes, we do. So that's very exciting. Well, on that note, Kevin, Jamish, I say, if you have any parting words of wisdom, please say them now or forever. Hold your peace until the next time we have you on the show. Yeah, no, thanks for having us on. And uh, Art, I would say, have you had a chance to play around with this yet? I'm going to spend some time after this playing more with it. Last week, I did have a chance and I played not with this feature. I played with the ingestion feature, frankly. Oh, so. yeah, it's a beautiful feature. I, I, I love it. But um, I, I would say uh, as parting thoughts, and I, I know Jamesh has one final, um, our project roadmap is out there. So uh, you don't have to wait if you are an uh, AWS customer to understand where the direction is trending for this work. It is very valuable for your feedback. And you know, for those of you on the show, um, you know, do find some time to play around with the feature set. And uh, please give us feedback on the, on the open source project. Um, you can find it at github.com, org's open search project, and there's a roadmap out there that tells you exactly what we're doing. Outside of that, Jamish, you got anything else? Um, just wanted to thank for thank you guys for being here and uh, you know send send your questions to us and we'll be happy to uh, share more insights. Thank you. Thanks Too for cool. joining us today. Thank you very yeah. much. You know, y'all take care and have a wonderful Friday and weekend. Right. You too. Thanks for having Alrighty. us on. Happy weekend. Thanks everybody. Bye bye. Well, Art, the time has come for us to say goodbye. But first, uh, for those that have joined us and stuck along with us, we want to hear from you. Uh, if you take just five minutes, it lets people know that we're doing okay as hosts. But also, the first 50 respondents get $10 in AWS credit. And while you're logged into that console using that $10 credit, guess what? You can see if you're eligible for a free YubiKey to put multi-factor authentication on your root account. Show them the key. Bam, there we go. I don't know that that's the one they're sending you. I Probably, I, I I don't know. With uh, you know, right. they come in many shapes and sizes, I, right? And 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 I don't know if they're giving out blue anymore. You know, just saying. Now here is another thing. So you could catch AWS on air every Friday here on Twitch TV slash AWS on air. And you know what? Instead of me just saying it, I bet I could just say, "Hey, make sure that you subscribe so you get notifications for when." we're airing and be sure to follow us on Twitter where we have tweets on, uh, you know, upcoming episodes and the topics on hand. And as always, thank you for your time. Happy Friday. Be good to one another. Have a safe weekend. But before we leave art, I have one more joke for you. You ready? Oh, I, I I'm ready. Knock, knock. Uh, who's there? Interrupting outro. <laughs> Interrupting outro. <laughs>